Hi there! Do you want to learn Power Automate and simplify your workflows? In this video, I will share one of the lessons from my Power Automate module on my Udemy course. If you want to access the course, check the pinned comment below or become a channel member to unlock all the lessons. Let's get started. Without further ado, let's get started building our first automation. And this is what we are going to do on this flow. When a new task is created in the SharePoint lists, we are going to send a notification on Teams to the approvers of the app because we have the tasks lists and the approvers lists. So let's get started and see how to build this. It's very simple, but we are going to extend this flow in the next lessons. So let's get started. We are going to create an automated cloud flow, but I'm going to create from inside the solution just as a good practice. If you don't have a solution, then you create from the Create tab. Okay, here we have the solution that we created before. That's called Learning Power Automate. And once it loads, we can see our existing flow right in here, the first that we created to learn. And now let's go to New, Automation, Cloud Flow, and select Automated. That will open the new flow pop-up, where we can see several triggers in here. And the one we are going to select is when an item is created. If we don't find that, we can search by SharePoint. Then it's going to show only the SharePoint triggers. See, we have a trigger when an item is deleted, when a file is created or modified, when an item is created, that's the one we are selecting, and so on. So let's select this one and let's give this flow a name. I'm going to just put auto in the beginning of the of the flow and then let's call it send a notification to the approvers when a new task is added it's a good practice to give a meaningful name so when you read the flow name you already know what it does but you can always rename the flow now let's click on create and the flow is going to be created and now we are presented with the old interface from Power Automate. Maybe in the future, it's already the new interface here. If we want to change to the new interface, we need to save, go back, and then reopen the flow. I cannot save right now because I need to add at least an action and also fill the information in the trigger. See, this trigger says when an item is created, we need to inform what's the site that we are monitoring, in this case, my site's called Timesheet App. That's this one. And what's the list that we are going to watch? In this case, my list is called Tasks. We may have more options in here, but we learn those as time passes. Let's focus on the basics. Now, if I try to save, it says that I need to have at least one trigger that's in here and one action. So let's add an action to be able to save. Usually what I do is I just add a compose that's an action just to save, to store some temporary data. So I click on compose and then I just put something in the inputs. As we can see here, we can already get the information from the item that was just created, the item that triggered this automation. See, we have all the columns from the SharePoint list here. ID, title, task date, description, approval status, and so on. I can get just any information here. Let's say the description, just to put something in the inputs of the Compose, and then I can click on Save, and that will save my flow. Let's just wait for it to save. Now it's saved. I can test it, but it's not doing anything yet. And I can go back. This will go back to my solution if, if I started the flow from a solution. And I can see that now I have the flow inside the solution and also I have the SharePoint connection. Everything that I use to connect in there will create a connection that I can use on other actions regarding that same connector. And it's going to be here inside the solution. See, that's why solutions are so important. They start to add everything that you created inside it and you can see everything here in one single place. Now, if I click again in the flow, it will go to the flow page where we can see the details of the flow 
And if we click on Edit, it will open using the new interface. That's the interface we are going to use to keep editing and improving this flow. See, so now it's in here. And this flow should trigger once a new item is created. We can test it to see if it really works. So to close this lesson, let's try that. If I click on Tests, then select manually and click on Test again, the flow will keep waiting until I create a new task in the list because this flow is just triggered when a new task is added. So let's go back to the list, click on Add a new item, and then we can just create a new item in here. The title is not important at this moment because we are not using it in the list, it's just hidden. So the task date, I'm going to put any date, worked hours for description, creating an automation in Power Automate. A project ID, here I need to know what's the project ID, I'll just put any number, let's say one. Because in the app that we created in the previous module, we are selecting the project via the app and automatically saving the ID in here. In this case, since I'm not going to use the app, I'm just going to use the list to insert new items. We are not focusing on the data consistency and just checking the executions of the flow right now. The approval status, it's pending and we don't have attachments. Let's just click on save. This will create a new task. It's in here, the first one. I will just order by ID so we can see better. The, the last tasks created will appear here in the top. So now we have the task in here created a few seconds ago by me. And if I go back to the flow, it's waiting to detect that the task was created and soon it will start running. After a couple of seconds, it detected that the task was created and triggered the flow. If we expand the trigger, I just clicked on the trigger, we can see here the details about the trigger, and we can see, for example, in the outputs of the trigger, we have something called body, where we have a JSON, that's this data structure. I can select everything and copy and paste in another file just to show it. Here we can see what the body is. The body of the trigger is this JSON structure, that's just a structure to share data across systems. And we have all the information, ID 9, task date, worked hours, description, project ID, approval status, and also the other information that's hidden behind the list. And this data is what we can use in the next steps. And in the compose, we just added the description, if you remember. And you can see that the input and output of the compose is exactly what we added in the compose configuration. That's the description. So now we could use the compose output in the next steps if we wanted to use the description for something. So as we can see, the flow just triggered based on a new task creation. If we go back to the flows page, we can see that we have a recent run here. And if, if we create a new task, we don't need to be testing the flow, it will just run. If we are not testing the flow, but the flow is turned on, it will run automatically. And then it will appear here. And if we want to see the details of that run, we can just come here and click on it. We will be presented with the run, and then we can expand each action to see the details. Now that we already have the flow and we can edit using the new interface and understand the basics of it, Let's keep adding to this flow so we can send the notification to the approvers. See you there. Do you want to watch the classes without any interruptions? By becoming a channel member or purchasing the course, you can watch ad-free and support the future of my content creation. Check out the link in the description and in the pinned comment to get started. See you in the next lesson.